We are back. Studies are showing that the practice of yoga reduces anxiety and depression in female trauma survivors. And my next guest had traumatic experiences throughout her lifetime. She found yoga to be a powerful healing source. Maggie LaFontan is an energy counselor and is here with us now. Hello, Maggie. How are you? Hello, and thank you for having me. It is my pleasure. I want to go to something that I think is really fascinating mm -hmm. because not only did you have these traumatic experiences, you have what I think is a miracle, right? Yeah. And that was what happened at 13, yeah. and it was something that happened when you were in the water. So, so tell us about it. Yeah. Okay, I was swimming in a lake, and I was a pretty good swimmer at 13. Mm -hmm. Um, but what happened was I started to drown <gasps> and I actually started to sink down and sink down and sink down and I started to swallow the water and Scary. I yeah and I was actually drowning um, but what happened was there was a uh, there was a dock but I couldn't reach it it was too, you were too, it far, was too away. far away right. it was too far away um, but there was a light that surrounded me and started to pull me up so did you see the light did you feel the I light? I felt the light and I saw the light and it was, it was kind of an angelic sort of experience. And I knew that it wasn't my time to die yet. I could feel it. So the light started to bring me up. And then there was a little boy that was on a floating dock. Right. And he, he was probably about seven years old. And he reached his hand down, but I still couldn't reach it. And this light was just bringing me up and bringing me up and bringing me up. To reach his hand. To reach his hand. And I finally reached his hand. And finally, but he still couldn't pull me up because I was 13. And right, he was and he was so little. Yeah, and he was little, right. yeah. But so finally he pulled me up on the dock, and then I'm, you know, coughing up water and the whole thing. And I was just kind of in shock at the whole thing. And um, he said, are you okay? I said, yeah. And he said, I didn't save you because I'm too little. Oh, he said that. He said that. That's amazing because yeah. you would have known that, but he knew that too. But so he yeah. he was part of that experience, he that was, wonderful experience. Yeah, yeah. And it was just I said, oh my goodness, I think that must have been an angel or something because I certainly couldn't bring myself up, and he was too young to bring myself right. up. You've had lots of experiences like that. Even one when you were five years old yeah. and you you saw your your father's deceased wife mm -hmm. in the house. So right. that's so you've actually moved on and and really have studied that. You have all these mm -hmm. these gifts in terms of precognition and mm -hmm. and you're going on to do that with with energy psychology. Right. What have you done with yoga? Because it seems that yoga is wonderful, and most people do think, well, this is yeah. just do, do the hatha postures, and, and you're great, but, and the breathing. Right. But you're doing research in, for your, yes. p your doctorate. Yes, I'm doing uh, research for my PhD in health right. psychology, and uh, my research focuses on female trauma survivors. Wow. So, so what are you finding? Well, what I'm finding is when um, someone experiences trauma, there's a disconnect between the mind and the body. Uh -huh. And yoga <clears throat> helps to reconnect the body and the mind and the emotions. So it helps them reconnect. And it's also a great form of stress release, too. Yes. How does that work in the, in the mind and the brain? Yes. Well, the research that I've done shows that yoga actually not only works in the muscles, but it reaches the brain and it lowers the cortisol stress hormone level. So when it lowers the level, mm -hmm. we're feeling relaxed. Okay. Relaxed and calm, and you can handle any kind of stress that happens throughout your day much better when your cortisol levels are low. So for example, if you do yoga in the morning, then your body's relaxed, the tension's relaxed from your body, your emotions are relaxed, cortisol hormone levels are down, so whatever happens during your day, during work or school or whatever you're doing, you're going to be so much better able to cope with that. So you can handle all that. And people yes. think, I don't have time for this, right? Mm. But even if they did a little bit. Even a little bit. 10 15, minutes. 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And likewise, if you choose to do yoga at night, you'll probably sleep a lot better too. So it won't keep you buzzed and up and anything like that? No, n not if you do... Um, uh, a, a low energy one. If you do a very fast vinyasa, uh, that kind of 90 minute, it might take you an hour or so to calm down before you can really settle down and sleep. What else has yoga been found to do? Yoga has found to reduce blood pressure, 
diabetes. Diabetes? Oh yeah, it could lower your sugar levels. It does so many different How things. How does it do that? Again, with this with The, the stress. sugar levels, it, it will balance out your sugar levels in the body. This research is incredibly important yes. and I guess for many years people were thinking something different but now mm -hmm. it's a holist a, an entire holistic approach which is everything that you Maggie LaFontaine <laughs> are about yeah yeah and even in terms of I use it in combination with my Reiki practice too because I'm a Reiki master right. so I com I help people to incorporate yoga and Reiki together to help them with mind body holistic spiritual healing and Everything about that, that whole mind-body connection is very, very important. Thank you so much. You are a gift. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Power Your Life will be right back, right ahead. Find out what's hot for next week. suffer from poor communication and do you know that poor communication is really a major cause of breakups and can cause so many problems and disconnects among family members and friends it seems so simple to just communicate with another person especially someone that we really really care about but it's a challenge and one that you can master good communication means really being engaged with the person through eye contact welcoming body language and really true active listening when you're surfing the net or you're checking test messages it doesn't really give your partner or your friend a warm fuzzy feeling about the interaction that you're having it's really just the opposite so try this tip next time you're talking to someone gaze into one eye and then the other going back and forth not only does it seem to make your eyes sparkle, which is great, it expresses interest, making the person feel special and valued. And who doesn't want that? Thanks for being with us tonight. Are you worried about piling on credit card debt with no relief in sight? Or does the thought of identity theft keep you awake at night? Next week, we'll have answers to these pressing challenges and more. Remember that you have the power to power your dreams and power your life.